Okay, today we've got a Holden VZ Commodore in V6 2007 model and what's happening he's got uh, codes all over the dash I've had the scanner on it we've only got catalytic codes on it and the customer complaint is loss of power and the lights are flashing on the dash I've got 293,000 on it. He hasn't had it serviced since he's had it for about four or five years. And he's due for a service. And once it warms up, you get a powertrain error on it. Now for a test run, and what happens once it warms up, just goes neutralizes completely you turn the vehicle off for a few minutes and you'll get drive for about 500 meters and then that'll start slipping again neutralizing so what I'm suspecting it's a block filter in it so we'll just drop the pan on it and have a look we'll just suck the oil out of it got the 4L60E transmission, the, the one with the deep pan. Got the pan off. There is a distinctive burnt smell there. And it looks like the magnet is missing in the pan. And you can see there's quite a bit of fine metallic debris in there. Something's definitely let go in there. Now this one's going to be a Rico. You can see how much fine metal's floating around in there in the filter. And that's what would have been causing that neutralising or the filter's completely blocked. So we've got a Rico. We've got to pull it out and uh, recondition this one. We're going to take the transmission out. Start with just marking the tail shaft the way it was, just to save time. You also, if you like, to mark the cross member for the transmission and the mount. The car have loosened it. Loosen them with a breaker bar first, and then you can hit them with the rattle bar. Might be easier if we just loosen the center bearing first. Allow that tail shaft to slide out a bit. We'll just take these two bolts off here. And then it should just be able to slide out here. There we go. Thirteen mil, and these are fifteen mil. I'll just take that rubber mount off. And that, those bolts are 15 mil, but to get access to it, I'm just going to use the long socket. Oop. Just remove the speedo sensor. 
just pull that little clip off and just wriggle it out. There we go. Now to be able to lower the transmission out, you'll see you've got your two catalytics there. You don't have to remove both, but you probably need to loosen one and just undo what the other one, just so the bell housing can fit through here. It is a pretty tight fit, as you can see. It's the uh, torque converter bolts. I've just taken that little inspection cover off. They need to be undone after you pull the starter motor out. Make sure you disconnect the battery as well first, otherwise it could uh, throw off your sparks there if something touches on the starter motor. And before I started doing any, anything on the job, I've squirted a bit of uh, WD-40 on, on those bolts on the, on the exhaust. When you're undoing these, sometimes they're that rusted and corroded, very difficult to get them off. The way you do it is after you loosen it, you have your little breaker bar and you actually go backwards and forwards and just slowly work it loose. If you just try and force it or do it with a rattle gun, you'll end up breaking the stud and creating more work for yourself. I don't like that sort of work anyways, um, drilling out studs. So if you just take a little bit of time and, and it will come out. But these ones are coming out quite easily. Uh, we've got our long 13mm socket, and you can see I've just, they just come right out. And to get this off, so you don't do damage to these oxygen sensors, you just remove the plugs top and bottom. On these ones I've got two, I've got one in front of the cat, and one behind the catalytic. And on the right hand side there, I won't take this one right off, and if you, you can see the transmission's actually lowering itself down, so everything that was holding the transmission up was on those, on that exhaust. There you can see the transmission's drop down a fair bit lower so you can have a little bit easier access to all the nuts and bolts what we need to take off. I'm taking this left side off and I like to do it by hand because if you do it by, with a rattle gun quite often you can break these off just create like I said creates more work for you sometimes you might need to work it a little bit spray a bit more rust penetrant on there but until you get it sort of going nice and easily like that, I wouldn't recommend using a rattle gun on it. Take this O2 sensor plug off, and we can take that side off, this side off completely. Motor again, I'm just going to disconnect this top oxygen sensor. So this plastic cover just pulls off, like that. and you can see the wiring there. We'll just follow that around and there you can see that's where the plug is there so we've got to remove that one and sometimes these plugs you'll try and pull them off or you press it you can't get it off so what you actually do is you push it in deeper sometimes there's a bit of tension on the little clip there there's a little clip so push it in deeper press the clip and then you'll find it just slides out easily There it is, and just run that through that behind that bracket so it doesn't get caught while you just push that down there. Take it right off. Just take that last little bolt off. And there we go. Now we've got a lot more room to work uh, on that drive plate take the torque converter bolts out. So got to undo the starter motor and just slide that out. If you can't slide it in far enough then you have to actually remove it out of the way. 
just so you've got better access there. With the bolts on those, you can either use, well, you should be using the 14 e torque socket, but you'll find that the 11 mil double hex socket will uh, work as well. I like to loosen them all before I take it off. Oh, that one's hard. There we go. Now on the starter motor here, you've got a little heat shield. And there's, it just clips on there. But just over here where my finger is, there's a little T25 Torx bolt. So you need to remove that to be able to get that heat shield off. T25. I've loosened it. There we go. That's hidden there. So don't try and pry it off. It'll just do damage. And that just unclips now. Just so need to use my other hand. There we go. It's just clipped onto the coil on the starter motor with that. Got the two bolts out. And then that should just wriggle out. And I just try and tuck it out of the way there, just to which it's not going to move anywhere, so I might have to remove that. To remove it, there's a little nut over here and that little clip there. And just like I mentioned earlier, make sure you disconnect the battery if um, one of those wires there goes to the live battery terminal. It'll uh, make your job very interesting if wires start melting while you're working on that. So disconnect your battery. We've got to just rotate this drive plate around until we get the little bolt, the torque converter bolt there, so we can undo it. Now, if you're doing this on the ground, it'll probably be easier if you remove that starter motor, but uh, I'm a lazy bastard, so I'll just leave it there. And being on the hoist, I've got more access. I can bend my elbows a little bit easier than when you're lying on the ground. So I'll just do that. I'll, you just rotate it around on the on the teeth there to try not to damage anything. So the torque converter bolts are a little bit hard to to see. Just, there you go. There's a head in that there are 18 mil. But what I like to do when I do actually locate where the bolt is, I like to just mark the drive plate here with a little bit of liquid paper. When you're putting it back, it'll just be easier to locate it. And to spin the torque converter around, I just use this, you can see the end of the screwdriver's bent, and you can just lever it there off the, off the bell housing. When you're doing stuff like that, just always be aware that you, you know, could damage something, so double check everything before you do that sort of work. Get a liquid paper. And I'll just mark it on there, just so I can see when that's in the middle of the hole. I know the bolt up there is in the right spot. Long 18 mil. I'll just find where the head of the bolt is. Uh, a bit hard to do with the camera right there. There we go. And what you do is you just sort of you can just rotate it around till it hits the side of the the housing there, and then we just there we go. It's got Loctite on it, so it'll be a little bit difficult to undo. There we go. That's a little bolt. 18 mil head. You can see the Loctite on it. 
Once you get the converter off, just make sure it's loose and push it into the transmission. We remove that with the transmission. So now I'm going to uh, just support the outside of that selector linkage with a shifter when you loosen that nut. Um, the reason being if you if you just try and loosen it without supporting that that little bracket there you can end up doing damage on the inside or bending it or something like that. And undone that and I've just tucked it in under that exhaust there just so it doesn't get in your way. Uh, to pull the plug out of the inhibitor switch you've got to pull this little tang out, pull that out and then this part here, the screwdriver, you just need to pull it, pull it down like that. And that whole plug just comes out like so. Probably a good idea to just take that can't see it there, little bolt there holding that clip there for the cable. And also good to remove those little plastic um, covers here on the bell housing or when you're pulling it out it gets stuck on the drive plate so you won't be able to slide it out. There's one on either side there, there's another one there. And uh, now we'll just take off those cooling pipes, you can see them just up here. And now I've just got to take this plug out. So what you do is you just have to squeeze the see if I can peel that rubber out of the way so you can see it, see it. There we go. And what you need to do is just pinch it. You see there's like a square little bit on the front and the rear and you squeeze that and wriggle it off. There we go. Just comes off fairly easily. And I just get a bit of wire or something just wire that whole loom out of the way so when you remove the transmission it's not going to get in your way and now we've just got the filler tube and those cooling lines to take off now there's not a lot of room to see what I'm doing here I might actually remove uh, the exhaust on this side or the catalytic just so I can film it a little bit easier normally I wouldn't wouldn't remove it. I just maneuver my hand in like that and just pull those clips out. But I'll show you how you need how you pull them out later. Got a long 10mm socket there and just taking the bolt off off the filler tube. And you can see it's right near the brake booster there. You can just wriggle that out now. Filler tube. A little bit awkward to get it out. Now with the motor or the transmission hanging down as low as it can, that'll give you a little bit more extra room to get these cooling lines off. What we do, we just push these plastic bits out. You can they're like a dust cover type thing. I'll just pop them out of the way with the screwdriver. They don't give you much room here. And these plastic covers also help um, contain that circlip. There's a little circlip there that holds that cooling line in. You can see the circlip right there. When I get it off I'll show you in a minute. But basically what you do is you just, you can rotate that around and push it off with a small screwdriver. Well there's a little tool there that you can just push it off. Now I've actually misplaced my tool there but I'll just show you what the circlip looks like. There's a little tool that just you push on this end and it just pops it out. If you don't have that tool you can just use a small screwdriver and just poke it in and just gently uh, push it out. Just be careful because these will fling out or fly out 
doesn't get in the eye and that's why we've got quite a collection of spare ones because <laughs> they fly out somewhere where you never find them again. Little tool there which is a bit of spring steel that's been sharpened pretty fine. The camera won't focus on it. A little bit hard to film but now I just try and stick the no, I'm not gonna go out at all with the camera there. I'm just going to stick that in there and just pry that little circlip out of that groove. It's probably better if I went and found my little tool. I'll just poke a little screwdriver in there and there we go. That's the top one. The bottom one's a little bit harder to see. And I'll just do the same with that one. And on that bottom one you can see, you can actually see where the ends are and you just have this little little fork bit that just pushes over there and the clip just falls out easily. But because I can't find it, I have to use the old way. I've got this really long screwdriver I made out of some spring steel especially for little jobs like this. Sometimes if you wriggle the pipe a little bit, it'll sort of loosen it a little, the circlip a bit. There's no tension on it. What have I done there? Let's rotate it around now. in the way, alright, and the camera's in the road. Anyway, you get the idea. Another way you can do it, you can just undo that fitting and then remove that when you've got the transmission out, you'll have a little bit more room. That's another option. And I'm using a pipe spanner, 18mm. Loosen it. There we go. I've got the bottom one off. The top one should just pop out. And it's important to to not bend the cooling lines because you can see there's not much room there. You got this servo housing here. Um, in the way and once it, when I get that transmission out I'll just pop that off I'll have more room and screw it back into the transmission all right I've got everything off there filler tubes out just wiggle that out all we've got left now are the bell housing bolts and you can see some of the bolts actually go from the front back like that one there, make sure you take them off as well. And the rest of them just go from the back in. So you can see where that one is above the steering, power steering rack there. This one that's going forward to back, I can actually get to it with my 12 inch extension bar. And you can see it's right there. If it focuses, there we go, 11 mil. Now 11 mil will fit on the bell housing bolts there, but if you want to use a proper one, it'll be these, the female Torx or the E-type Torx sockets. And on this one, they are the 14. And I've just got 
the 3 8 drive I've got my little half inch drive adapter now I've got my long extension bar 4 foot with the E14 socket remove the bell housing bolts. One thing I forgot was to take the hose off the breather there. I'll just do that before I lower it down as well. Okay, all the bolts off the bell housing. Just pull it out. all out and now we can take that cool bottom cooling line fitting on and just put it back bolt it back into here and you can see had to have a bit of a wiggle there that dowel pin there is all rusted so it was pretty tight on there and you can see the other ones up there always good to put a little bit of grease on there they are a fairly precision sort of fit and fitting these back in it's just a reverse of what we've just done when you're putting the torque converter in just make sure you line up the pump drive sometimes I'll have slots sometimes I'll have holes like for lugs and you've also got converter data splines and the input shaft splines to line up so there's three things that need lining up Always put the torque converter into the transmission and when you bolt the bell housing up this should be nice and free. If it's not free it means something's locked up. There should even be a little bit of movement between the drive plate and it bottoming out on the transmission. When you're filling it put about three or four litres of fluid in and that'll basically fill the pan start it up for literally five to ten seconds max that'll pump the oil into the torque converter put another three or four liters in do the same again start it for five to ten seconds that'll push more oil up into the torque converter and then you can put another couple of liters in and keep the motor running while you check the oil level if you don't do it that way uh, what happens you'll just fill this and it'll start coming out of the the filler and you'll get a false reading and possibly seize up the pump in the in the transmission and that's basically it just make sure the dowel pins are in your motor and they're nice and clean and always nice to put a little bit of grease where that torque converter spigot goes into the crankshaft Anyway, I hope that's helped. Thank you for watching.